Today's video is about the vector data structure, more specifically about how the vector's pushback method works. Hello, I'm James Helfrich. The vector and the array are the two of the most commonly used data structures in C++. What makes the vector different than the array is we can grow the size of the vector where the array size remains static. We grow the array with the pushback method. We'll demonstrate how the pushback method works by pushing three elements onto a vector, taking one off the back, and then pushing three more. So we'll start with an empty vector, and this empty vector has zero num elements, zero num capacity, and the data pointer points to null. Now, when we try to push back A, we're gonna to try to add one to our current capacity. Now, notice that our capacity equals our number of elements, so we're full, or empty in this case, so we need to first allocate a new buffer. The allocated new buffer is initially zero. Notice how num capacity equals one, but num elements equals zero. After we've allocated sufficient space, then we can add the new value. We try to push back another element, we'll notice that the vector once again is full. This happens when num capacity num elements equals the same. So what do we do is we double the size of the capacity by creating a new buffer and copying over the old element. And then we remove the old, the old buffer. After this is done, then we can push back B. Now, when we attempt to push back C, once again, num capacity and num elements equals the same, so we're full. So therefore we have to allocate a new buffer that's twice the size of the original. And now um, we have the new buffer allocated, now we can add C. When we attempt to pop back, we don't actually change the size of the buffer, we just change the number of elements. And so num capacity still equals four, and num elements equals two. If I try to push back X, notice how we have two extra elements in our capacity, so no reallocation is necessary. We try to push back Y once again, our capacity is larger than our elements, therefore we can add it without changing the size of our buffer. When we try to push back Z, notice that num capacity and num elements both equals each other, therefore we are, at, we are full, so we have to allocate a new buffer that's twice the size of the, of the previous one. And once this is done, then we can push back Z. There are four ways to insert elements into a vector. There's pushback, which has two variants, which is copy push and move push. We also have insert, which will insert a T at a given location specified by the iterator. We have resize, which will change the number of elements, either filling the new elements with the default value or with a specified T. Or finally, we can reserve. And what reserve will do is it will change the capacity, but will not change the size. In other words, num elements remains unchanged. So how does pushback work with the vector? Well, it is first necessary to check to see if the size equals capacity. If the capacity is zero, we reserve one element. If the size equals capacity or full, then we double the capacity. <clears throat> and then we just add our new element onto the array. So why do we double the capacity every time we have to reserve more space? Well, let's take a look at this code here where I'm gonna insert 18 elements one at a time using pushback. Okay, notice how the size increases by one every time, but the capacity goes to one, then two, then four, then eight, then 16. In other words, the reallocation is going to um, happen less and less frequency. If, there were, if we're gonna add 1000 elements, we're only gonna need to do 10 reallocations. Um, and this means that there's log n reallocations. The content for this video came from chapter eight for C++ data structures, namely example 8.1. To learn more about C++ data structures, take a look at the link in the video description.